I want to welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Seth Semela from Hope Living, and today's an amazing day as we are doing a tasting with one of my favorite actors, Pierce Bronson, legendary actor, film producer, environmentalist, philanthropist, and artist. He's known for his rich and extensive career, both in front of the camera and behind the scenes, and is now Casa, de Mo Casa Don Ramon's global spokesperson. Besides that, uh, Pierce is on the latest issue of Hope Living. It's been an honor to tell his story, so I'm very excited to welcome Pierce Bronson to our webinar today. So Pierce, uh, welcome um, to the webinar. And besides Pierce, I want to, oh, we have Pierce. Welcome, it is, Pierce. It is Pierce, and it's Pierce Brosnan, but never mind. <laughs> Thank you so much, Pierce, for uh, coming today. Where are you today, Pierce? I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm down here working on a film called The Outlaws, which is uh, an Adam Sandler production. I'm with Adam Devine, and it's a, it's a uh, wonderful comedy. It'll be out on Netflix, maybe by the end of the year, probably in the new year, though. Amazing. I also want to introduce Miguel Buncamino. Miguel is the Charleston-based mixologist behind Holy City Handcraft, where he shares his passion for craft cocktail culture on social media and has created the original cocktail recipes for Casa Don Ramon. And P Miguel is also going to be teaching us how to mix amazing drinks. So it's an honor to have you also, Miguel. Thanks for having me, I guess. And that's a beautiful setup. Where are you, uh, Miguel? So this is actually my home bar. I somehow convinced my wife to convert our formal dining room into this. So, so I'm, I'm in Charleston, South Carolina. Well, today's exciting. I'm in Miami, Florida. I'm actually at the Aston Martin Residences, um, new building in Miami. So um, it's a beautiful day in Miami, as you could see the Biscayne uh, waters, I mean, the, is behind me. So I'm very excited because we have a couple of different bottles that um, I'd love for you to share and kind of discuss, Miguel. So maybe you could kind of start in before we ask some of the questions um, and tell us what we're going to experience today. Absolutely. So uh, today, you know, on behalf of Casa Don Ramon, uh, we will be sampling the Platinum collection, uh, which is their offering of Cristalino tequilas. Uh, so today we're going to be sampling, sampling a Plata, which is kind of their silver uh, unaged tequila, uh, their Reposado, and their Añejo. So I'm going to be walking through each of these uh, offerings and also making a cocktail out of the Añejo once we're done with the tasting. Amazing. So um, before we get in this, I'd love to ask, um, start with a question with Pierce. Pierce, if you don't mind me asking, who influenced your drink choices most in your life? <laughs> well, uh, you know, I, I've been an actor all my life. So an actor's life uh, is a gypsy's life. And especially if you had the good opportunity to find work and stay at the table as long as I have. Uh, so uh, who influenced me? <laughs> That's a kind of rather abstract question, really. But, uh, you know, it, uh, I suppose pub life, you know, you finish the production at nighttime, the theater, you go to the bar, you go to the, you have a pint and you go home. Uh, life goes on and then you find good wines and then life goes on and you might enjoy, as we are today, tequila. Amazing. Um, and then the next question is, is how has your preference for spirits changed as you've matured? I, well, as I said to you, I mean, I didn't really drink spirits back in my, my youthful days. Uh, it was beer and wine, but, uh, you know, tequila came into my life when I went to Mexico for the first time on Remington Steel. And oh, wow. it was always a thing of eating the worm and that was a kind of fascinating and uh, rather nauseating idea to eat the worm. Of course, I've since now learned that you can eat the worm and it's, it's not bad for you at all. But uh, Mexico, first time in Mexico was uh, on Remington Steel and that's when tequila came into my life, tequila shots and uh, having a good time. 
So before we get into the tasting, I'd love to understand how you and the brand um, got, how, how you became familiar with the brand. Did you taste it and become a big fan or tell us how you learned about the brand? My agent of nearly 35 years, Liz and I have worked together and made many commercials and, and worked extensively around the world. They came knocking on our door. I inquired who they were, the family and the business, and we met and I enjoyed their company and I enjoyed the, 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 the tequila. And uh, that's how it started. That's about two years ago now. So Miguel, why don't we get um, started with uh, the drinks? And before we do that, you, you talked about before we came on, they're now available at what website were you telling me, Miguel, if you want to order these? Yeah, so as of today, they are available on reservebar.com and you can order them there and they'll ship them right to your door. So we have the honor of having you um, kind of, you know, pour some drinks with us. So I'd like you to kind of take over and maybe as you sure. do, I could ask some questions and let you take over. Absolutely. Honor is mine, by the way. Thank you so much for having me. Um, so I figured we'd kind of taste the tequilas, uh, all the offerings starting from the unaged all the way to the age, which is the Añejo aged for about a year. Uh, and that way you can kind of get a good sense of each offering and the nuances between each offering. So let's start with the Plata. Uh, I think y'all have your kits with you as well. Um, we drink tequila, not out of shot glasses. Tequila like this is meant to be sipped and or you know mixed in cocktails. But for the most part, if we're sipping, we're gonna be sipping out of a tequila flute and similar to a wine glass, it lets you nose the cocktail. That's one of the, I'm sorry, nose the tequila. And it brings out a lot more of those aromas that kind of accentuates the flavors of the tequila. So um, the first one we're gonna pour, like I said, is the Plata. Uh, it's our silver uh, unaged tequila. It's good to see you again, Miguel, by the way. <laughs> Cheers, likewise, likewise. Yeah. Dashing as always, what can I say? And I you, have, not me. <laughs> I have all the uh, wonderful paraphernalia that goes with uh, mixing cocktails. Uh, that is perfect. Oh, Mick. But I didn't realize this is the actual true sipping glass for tequila. I never realized. Yes, that. absolutely. So there is such a thing as a tequila flute. And it looks like a uh, almost like a brandy glass, just a little taller, um, almost like a miniature white wine glass. Um, and it's meant to, it's, it's taller because you're meant to swirl it without it really spilling. Um, so once you swirl it, you'll kind of notice the legs come down uh, off of that tequila. And because of that, you kind of get the aromas right off the inside of the tequila, inside of the glass for this tequila. And since this is an aged, uh, you know, tequila is made with agave, mm. you'll notice that it's, uh, it's got some grassy grassy notes to it because it is just raw agave that is cooked, uh, roasted, and then made and distilled into tequila. So um, these younger tequilas are typically uh, a lot brighter, uh, a lot more citrus forward. So if you nose that, and nosing is another way for another word for smelling it, you'll notice that it is kind of bright. So let's go ahead and taste it. So after tasting it, I would love to get your thoughts, but for me, I get a lot of um, um, that cooked agave flavor, kind of a roasted fruit flavor to it. It's very warm, but it, it's very warm, it's very smooth. Very smooth. Um, <clears throat> smooth is the biggest word of it, it goes down very nice. Mm. Absolutely, absolutely. But you get those notes of fruit in there, you know what I mean, like kind of roasted fruit, which is really nice. and. You know, typically you'll get that with a lot of um, um, aged tequilas, but in, in this case, you know, this is very bright and very um, fruity, which is great. So it's a great sipping tequila. This is killer, killer in a margarita as well. And at mm -hmm. that price point, uh, you know, you shouldn't feel bad about making a good cocktail with a good tequila. So okay. cheers, the, guys. The price on this one, Miguel? Um, I believe that one is, I want to say $55. Okay. Um, I, I believe that is the case and they kind of go up incrementally. So by $5 each. So uh, I believe the Plata is 55, the uh, Reposado is 60 and the Añejo is 65. Right. Uh, Miguel, why isn't the, cause we're drinking the Plata, correct? Yes, sir, the Plata. 
Yeah, so why isn't the tequila Don Ramon Platinum Plata a Cristalino? Um, so it's not a Cristalino because it actually comes clear already. Um, it's not, uh, it doesn't have to go through another filtration process. So you'll kind of notice the Reposado and the um, Añejo, if you look at them side by side with the Plata, um, they're clear. Any, any other Añejo or Reposado, I think you might have a bottle of the Punta Diamante stuff. And yeah. you can tell that that one, you know, has some color to it. And that's due to the barrel aging that these tequilas go through. So when it's a Cristalino, it actually goes through an extra filtration process, which takes out um, a lot of those uh, nuances of uh, the barrel char and produces a clearer tequila. Um, the, maestro, the tequila maestro at Casa Don Ramon, actually, you can see there's a, a slight tint of orange. It's not completely clear. If you wanted to leave some of those elements from the barrel in this tequila, that's why it's not completely clear. Uh, in these, actually, there's a slight, slight tint of, uh, of yellow from the barrel, even though it's okay. filtered after distillation. And I didn't know that. Yeah, that's, uh, it produces kind of a... Um, uh, tequila that is, I hate, I hate using the word smooth because I feel like that's such a cop out, but it really does go down easier because it's so mellow. It mellows out a lot. It's already barrel aged to mellow the distillate. And then it's filtered again to take out a little bit more of the, uh, you know, the, the, those uh, flavors that are a little harsher. So it should go down very easy uh, and it's delicious. Miguel, so you got, you got, um, sure. sorry to interrupt you, Pierce. Go ahead, please. No, but all of these tequilas that we're tasting, Miguel, are just sipping tequilas, but they can also be mixed in a cocktail, a margarita. Oh, 100%. 100%. Yeah, yeah I think um, they're at a good price point where you can not feel bad about mixing these in a, in a margarita. Or one of my favorites is a Oaxacan Old Fashioned, which is a stirred cocktail. So if you're a fan of an old fashioned, which is just uh, you know whiskey or cognac with uh, bitters and sugar, so try that, but use uh, your Añejo, which is kind of your aged offering, more similar to like an aged bourbon, uh, with agave nectar instead of simple syrup, which is makes sense because this is made from agave and Angostura bitters, which I think you both have. Mm -hmm. Try that. It is incredible. Uh, and it's such a good change of pace from just a traditional old fashioned. And Miguel, if, um, if our viewers aren't aware, do you mind explaining um, what Cristalino tequila is exactly? Sure, yeah, Cristalino tequila is uh, just like any other tequila, but it goes through another filtration process just to remove um, not only the color, but some of those like nuances that you don't necessarily want with uh, the barrel char. Um, so <clears throat> it produces just the cleaner, easier drinking tequila. Uh, uh, this is their first foray, Casa Don Juan's first foray into producing these Cristalinos. And that's that's what they've uh, uh, dubbed as the Platinum Collection. So that's what we're uh, tasting here today. And what exactly is the Platinum Collection? Uh, that That's the, the Cristalino tequilas uh, from Casa Don Ramon. Okay. And the aging process for each one is different? Uh, it is. So with the Reposite, Reposado, similar to uh, most uh, tequilas out there, the Reposado is actually aged for about four to six months before mm. it's taken out of the barrel. Um, and usually it's ex-bourbon barrels, but it could be um, others. Uh, I think some use uh, French oak barrels. Um, and then the uh, Añejo is aged for a year. And after a year, it mellows out a lot of those uh, um, flavors from, from the distillate, the original distillate, and mellows out that bourbon. And then going through the, the filtration process again to make it clear, I mean, it, it is just such an easy sipper. Mm. Now, the if, if you don't mind, if you don't mind me asking. Plant is very, very large plant, Miguel. It's yes. One that I've seen. Absolutely. And will each plant deliver a bottle or more, or how many yes. plants will it, it take? Uh, I think they estimated that one of these bottles takes about 15 pounds of agave to make, which is wild. I mean, 15 pounds of anything is a lot to fit into a bottle like this size, but there's a lot of sugar that comes in agave, which is which comes out more the more you roast it, which they roast it over the course of, I think a week or so, uh, maybe a little less, but it brings out a lot of those sugars that crystallize and you know, sugar plus yeast equals alcohol. And that's how they produce these uh, tequilas. Pierce, are you a sipper of tequila or do you prefer to have it mixed? 
No, I enjoy sipping these tequilas. They're very smooth. They're very comforting. They're very, they're lively, exuberant, and uh, smooth. You know, yes. they, don't, they don't bite your throat. They, exactly. Uh, they're very well, easy. And, uh, you know, I, I did a movie in Mexico City many years ago, and uh, I'd go to lunch, and everyone would be sipping tequila at lunchtime. It was Greg Kinnear and I in a movie called The Matador, which we had great fun making, and... Uh, just a little shot a day. <laughs> Absolutely. It is actually one of the healthier spirits out there uh, because it is just agave, natural natural ingredients, uh, nothing to it. There's no additives in these tequilas. Um, I think it's tequila gets a bad rap, especially if you went to, uh, I guess, an American college where you're just shooting bad tequila, um, which made a lot of people sick. So they got turned off to tequila when they got a little older. But when you're sipping 100% agave tequila, such as this, there's no hangover and it just is a delicious sipping tequila. And this little jigger, the large one holds how much and the little one? That one might be a little different than mine. I wanna say that one might be one ounce on one side and maybe right. a half ounce on the other side. But we can work through it. We'll see, we'll see how that goes. Um, did you guys wanna, Tried to taste the reposado and kind of walk through. Yeah, that let's. One. Yeah, I would love that. Yeah. What'd you guys think of this one, by the way? Again, um, for me, it, it tasted. It was. It was a very. It went down very well for me, mm -hmm. and I liked it a lot. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, wait. Wait till you taste this one. This one is a. This one is a crowd favorite. This uh, so this one is the reposado uh, with the kind of burgundy label. Oh, uh, this one burgundy. is. Yep, yeah, that's the one. This one is aged for about four to six months in uh, in barrels and then uh, filtered to, again to remove a lot of the, that color and some of those nuanced flavors. Um, so I kind of want to get y'all's thoughts before I even say anything about this one uh, because I think there's a pretty distinct uh, kind of smell and flavor um, for this tequila. So go ahead and swirl it one more time and go ahead and knows your uh, tequila flute. Mm -hmm. Hmm. I'm going to taste. Yeah, feel free to taste it. Oh, that is very delicious. <laughs> that is very right? good. I could so think the cows come home. Oh my, oh my <laughs> gosh. There's, and there's no, there's no sugar in this. It, it is That's uh, cool. actually when I, I want to hear y'all's thoughts. I want to, before I even say anything, I want to hear what you guys think about it. Well, it's very buttery. Again, it's it's just it, it's it's very smooth and delightful. Light, light on the tongue. Yes. On the palate. When you, for me, when you start out, it has a a strong taste, but then it becomes very light and goes down really well. And so Absolutely. that to me is the best part of it. It comes in and you're thinking it's a strong tequila, and then mm -hmm. and then it, as it goes down, it goes very light. I've never had. It that type of an experience. I don't know if you, if that's correct. Absolutely. No, for sure. And I think that's the appeal of it too. But tell me if you, tell me if you get this, I get a lot of baking spices, you know, remind, it, it gets a lot of uh, apple and um, cinnamon, some, mm. uh, some, a lot of vanilla in there. Oh, so cool. now that I've, now that I've said that, try that one more time, not trying to get you guys drunk, but you know, <laughs> it's okay. How do they make yeah. the vanilla taste? How does that, you know, that all, that all comes from the barrel. These have no additives. They don't add anything else to it. So that comes from the barrel that they chose for the for this uh, particular offering. And this is an oak barrels. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. I never thought of um, so the question red. that Gina asked. Um, oh. It's the repo. It's the reposado. Um, asked which one we were drinking? So I just wanted to clarify that to Gina. That's it. Reposado, four to six, uh, four to six months, and uh, and then uh, filtered. So this is their Cristalino Reposado. But uh, yeah, this uh, when I was doing this uh, tasting, someone said it tasted. It, it was nostalgic to them. It reminded them of their their mother's cooking um, uh, in terms of baking a dessert. It's like those fresh fall spices is what it reminded them of. Yeah. I like this. This is my favorite. I mean, we're only at two, but this is my favorite. We're only one. at two. You haven't even tried yeah. the Añejo yet. That's that's a year. That's a year which one, I mean, you've done this before. What is your favorite of the three? Ooh, that's uh, that's hard to say. Um, I, if I had to pick, you know what? I'm I'm gonna 
I'm going to answer you after we try the Añejo because I don't want to bias. Okay. Um, That's a good yeah, point. That, That's actually is that valid. fair? Yes. Is that fair? Because I want to I want to see what you guys think too. I want to see what y'all's favorite was. And this um, is for everyone um, watching this. I, I'm a tequila person and I'm very impressed with the taste of the first two tequilas. Mm -hmm. um, as of right now, the second one is my favorite. I really like right? that tequila and it has a very unique taste to it also. Absolutely. All right, are y'all ready to move on to the Añejo? Yes, please. What do you guys think? Let's do it. All right, and this is the Añejo offering, again, aged for about a year, um, also in uh, an oak, and then filtered again. Um, but this one <laughs> is going to be a lot more mellow, and um, I'm sure y'all have drank bourbon in, in your lifetime. But mm -hmm. this actually, since it is aged for about a year, tell me if you get the notes of oak in here, uh, similar to how you would nose a bourbon. So Miguel, um, this is a year and the Plata is how long again, did you say? Zero, unaged. Okay, so there's zero and then the, um, and then the, um, the one we just had before that is six months, you said, correct? Four to six months, yes, sir. Okay. Reposado. 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 Mm -hmm. Hmm. Interesting. So, lots more oak in this one for sure, right? Definitely woody, woodier. Woody. Yep. You get um, you get kind of uh, a nutty kind of a undertone to it, um, and I get I get some cinnamon in there too, similar to the the reposado. But you know, it's all in the same family, so that's pretty typical that they'll have you know similar flavor profiles. But I mean, the the oak on this is is delicious. This is kind of like the bourbon drinkers tequila, right? Like if you're gonna make an old fashioned, the, the one I was saying a while ago, the Oaxacan old fashioned, this is this is it. This is the one you use. We have and lots of vanilla, lots of vanilla from that oak, from that barrel. Woo! I know. <laughs> I feel good. There he is. <laughs> He's back. He's yes. back. Yes. <laughs> Pierce is on break for the movie. He's gonna kill it in the, uh, in the next scene, right, Pierce? <laughs> no. no, it's the end of the day for me. Uh, today was a day off, and tomorrow we go into night shooting. Oh, amazing! Oh man, so uh, this is a good way to end your day. Done in your career, Pierce. Was that uh, Seth? Um, how many movies have you done in your career? Oh, that's a good question. I think it's sixty plus, maybe more. I've been doing, you know, I've been an actor since I was 18. 18. Yeah, 18, 19. That's when I started in South London in a beautiful uh, arts lab called the Oval House. And I did street theater and children's theater and traveled to Amsterdam and Paris and then trained. I went to an academy called the Drama Center for three years and you know, I came out and I've been working since you know 1977 long time long time I don't know what else to do now <laughs> taste tequila but it's been it's been very good I've been very lucky very blessed uh, to travel the world and met wonderful people and uh, enjoyed a, a very good life of being an actor I mean, you're living, I mean, do you ever pinch yourself? I mean, because from a kid, you like you from 18 years old, this is probably what you wanted to do. And in your business, it's very hard to be so successful for such a long time. And to me, well, that's an amazing accomplishment. Yes, thank you, Seth. I mean, it's a very capricious game. And, you know, they like you, half like you, don't like you, but whatever. <laughs> but I've managed to make a commercial success of, of my career and the tiny bit of talent that I've got somewhere in my back pocket <laughs> I just to kind of, you know, enhance it as the years go by. And um, it's, it's interesting watching the cycle of one's life, you know, from a young man and Remington Steel, I dropped into LA in 1982 and went for my first interview and got the job and it was Remington Steel. So it's been good to me, Amazing. very good to me. Cheers to you and to your success. Yeah, cheers, Pierce. Absolutely. Thank you, Seth. Thank you, Miguel. And, to you and it's an honor to have you on the cover of our magazine because um, 
what you've done in your career is so successful, but being able to sip tequila with you is an honor and it's a feat because I'm a huge fan of your accomplishments. So thank you so much again for taking today. Cheers, Pierce. Thanks, Amelia. Seth, when, Seth, when is the uh, magazine coming out? The magazine has been out. Um, oh, cool. Okay. And so it's been out. Um, it actually came out about a month ago. And so we're very honored. We are very excited to be able to do this tasting um, and just share what, um, what, Pierce is, what Pierce is behind. And, and I'm pleasantly surprised. Anyone, if you like tequila, you must try this tequila. It's, it's um, for me, now that we've looked at the three children, we could go, oh, I'd like to hear everybody's favorite of the three, but mine was number yes. two. I think that taste is, I've never had that type of a taste of a tequila. So for yep. me, um, that's what mine is. How about yours, Pierce? I would, I would agree with you, Seth. I think the Reposado is a really beautiful drink, but all three of them are unique and they have great personality and they're really <laughs> quite delicious. They're flavorful. Yes. And uh, you, you can make many a great uh, cocktail from any three of these tequilas by Don Ramon, 100%. Absolutely. One of the questions that I, um, that I saw, um, and this is for Pierce, is Casa Don Ramon plants two agave plants for everyone they harvest. How does um, the sus uh, sustainability factor into the goods you acquire and drinks you consume? I didn't realize um, they do that for everyone they harvest, which is great. So what's your thoughts on that? Well, the sustainability of this earth is of vital importance to us all. And uh, to be associated with a tequila like Don Ramon, who are very conscious of the sustainability of harvesting the plants and the agriculture, and to the men and women who harvest them, uh, you know, that was important in our discussions. Um, as we all know, this earth is definitely at a tipping point here. And uh, so to be able to produce a drink like this, which uh, uh, enhances one's days and gives vitality to certain occasions in life, and that it, it has all of the factors of sustainability of the earth, that's very important and very good. What's your thoughts on that, Miguel? That is an incredible answer, by the way, because I feel like Pearson even rehearsed that. That was just off the cuff. That's incredible. No, uh, I, I mean, I, I agree. I share the same sentiments as, uh, as Pierce. I think sustainability when it comes to the spirits world, there's a lot of waste that comes um, out of producing spirits. And I think Casa Don Ramon does a really good job with um, trying to be a sustainable company. And as Pierce said, you know, this we only have one earth uh, and they do a really good job of, you know, trying to take care of it, right? So that's, that's very important. And uh, one of the reasons why I do like working with them as well. Amazing. So we're going to make a cocktail next, correct, Miguel? Yes. I, I see Pierce is already holding his lemon. He's ready. You I know? got my lemon. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have a question. Um, someone asked you a question, Miguel. How many cocktails sure. have you made in your career? Oh, my goodness. Um, that's a great question. Uh, I feel like at this point, I should probably start a book. Uh, I probably have a little under 200. Um, in my, in my arsenal of photography and, and, and recipes. Uh, I've been doing uh, kind of this cocktail recipe development for the last five years. And just over the years, uh, there's stuff that I like personally, but there's also, um, you know, some like Casa Don Ramon's recipes uh, on their website. By the way, if, yeah, if you're looking for uh, recipes for these tequila specifically, check out casadonramon.com. Uh, all my recipes are on there. Uh, and I hope, everyone likes them, but uh, they're pretty well balanced in terms of whichever offering uh, you want to choose here. So there's a recipe for each offering. Hmm. And the one today is called the Voltaire. The Voltaire. Do you guys want to get started? I can go ahead and... Uh, yeah, let's get, get started. Yeah? And if you don't mind, um, Miguel, it'd be great. Um, we're going to share, I'm going to share in the group chat um, right now the, um, the actual ingredients that you have. Oh, perfect. Absolutely. Um, I'm looking for that as we speak, but as we do that, do you mind kind of going over um, what we're putting in there also? For sure. Yeah, the Voltaire is a cocktail I created with the uh, Añejo. Uh, it's the signature cocktail 
for the Platinum Añejo. And in my head, you know, I wanted to highlight the flavors in uh, this particular offering. I didn't want to mask it. I think these tequilas do a really good job of, um, as a base spirit in a cocktail, that's exactly what it is. You build off of a base spirit. You don't want to hide any of those flavors. While they do go great with a lot of uh, fruit, uh, I wanted to keep the Añejo true to the taste and flavor in this bottle. So um, you'll find that this recipe has uh, hints of citrus, hints of vanilla, and a little bit of a, a floral aspect from the lavender. I didn't want to mask any of the flavors that uh, came in this bottle. So uh, it's a light sipper. Uh, it's not something that will blow your socks off in terms of, um, uh, I guess, alcohol content, if you will. It's something that you can sip over time. And um, um, I hope you guys like it. Uh, and for I can, everyone I can... watching this, I actually put the ingredients of Miguel's secret cocktail in the chat room. So you're more than welcome <laughs> to, if you like the, um, if you like what you see, you could take this and we'd love for you to uh, take, um, take this on your own time. So thank you so much. So we'll, I have all the ingredients, so I'm excited to hear from you, Miguel. Absolutely. Uh, and it's a super easy build too, because we don't even need any uh, particular tools other than our jigger, uh, which we all have. Pierce, I got do have it. a jigger, and we are doing the Añejo Cristalino, we, yes? We, we are doing the Añejo Cristalino, yes, sir. This is it. So we're going to start with our The next question is, is oh. do we do this glass or do we do the sipping glass? You know, you can do, um, you should start with the bigger glass for sure. Okay. Um, and this is built in a Collins glass, but you, you can absolutely use a stemmed wine glass if you want. Um, this is a really easy sipper and you know there's no frills to it it's built in the glass which is great um so we're going to start with an ounce and a half of our uh añejo cristalino mm -hmm. so uh pierce it's the big side i got it cool mm -hmm. yep easy peasy this guy back on and then we're going to take take our dry vermouth um a vermouth is a fortified wine. You should always keep it in the fridge or else it goes bad. Uh, so the dry vermouth has a lot of uh, hints of citrus in it as well, which kind of goes along with the citrus uh, uh, flavors that are in the Añejo. So we're going to use three quarters of an ounce of our dry vermouth. The, the wee one, the little fella. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. I actually have mint itself. I didn't get that. Is that okay if I put the mint in? Um, I actually use lavender for this, but choose your own adventure. I think that's the beauty of cocktails. Oh, no, no, no. I, um, I have a lavender too. So that I just. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh, use, the, use the lavender for this one. We're actually going to add it at the end. Okay, perfect. Right. Cool. I, uh, I couldn't get lavender. I have uh, aromatic bitters. Aromatic bitters. Oh, that's that's uh, where I, I was. Pierce and I have the same exact one. That's where I was thrown off. All right. No worries. How much that's did a, we put it's a classic. This, um, if we get this and we don't get yours, how much should we dump in this by chance, Miguel? Let's do let's <laughs> let's just do let's just do two dashes of our uh, Angostura bitters for you guys. Um, I'm gonna do about because we don't want it to overpower the tequila. Angostura okay. tends to be uh, a little bitter, a little herbal. Uh, lavender bitters. Uh, this one comes from Charleston, South Carolina, uh, mm -hmm. company called Jack Rudy Cocktail Company, um, and I'm gonna use about four dashes uh, of, of these bitters, but it's it's light and floral, um, but it just kind of accentuates the uh, citrus aspect of the uh, of this Añejo. So the last but not least, we're gonna do uh, three quarters of an ounce of vanilla simple syrup, but I think you guys might just have regular simple syrup, correct? Yeah, I've just got simple syrup. Me cool. myself okay. too. Gotcha, so let's do three quarters of an ounce, which is, uh, again, I think with your jiggers, it might be the, the small side. Yes. Okay. All right. And then um, we're going to fill up. We're going to fill up this Collins glass or um, whatever glasses you guys uh, decide to use for this with ice. All the way to the top. I just got my. I mean, Pierce and I don't have a bar like yours. You have the fancy no. bar. <laughs> you no got everything at all. in there. Absolutely. Hey, I could I've got the cocktail shaker here. Yeah, no, yes. Hey. I got a cocktail. Man. Can I put it in here? And um, You can. You don't have to. Um, this is a pretty easy build. Do you have a spoon on you? I think your kit comes with a spoon, right? 
Yeah, it does. Perfect. Okay. Well, um, have you guys added ice to your, your uh, glass yet? Yes, yes I have. Perfect. Can you fill it all the way up, Miguel? Fill it all, fill it all the way up. Yes, sir. Uh, more, more ice, the better, because once we, we top it with soda water, a lot of that ice is going to melt. So um, I'm actually going to add a couple more cubes to mine. Okay. That goes. Okay. All right. So uh, last but not least, we're going to fill it up with about, I don't measure this part, but about like three to four ounces of, um, of our soda water. Nice and bubbly. And I'll just fill that up. Let's go to Mountain Valley. Oh, there it is. Mountain Valley. Okay. Valley. All right, we are almost there, guys. Um, now we're just going to stir. We take our ridiculously long spoon and we're just going to stir our cocktail so it's all incorporated with that soda water and all the ingredients in there. There it is. Perfect. And now we work on our garnishes. So um, again, want to accentuate the citrus notes in here. Uh, I'm going to add a lemon twist in here. Um, so what I do is I, you don't have to do this part. This is kind of optional. But if you want to, you take a lemon peel and you just express the oils that come from the zest of the lemon on top of the cocktail. And then all it does is provide you with the aroma of the, uh, of the citrus on top of your cocktail. I've got a good old bread knife here. The oh my gosh. The last time we did this, Miguel, I was in Hawaii and uh, I had yeah. paraphernalia. So <laughs> I was using a mason jar. Uh, hey, you know what? It worked out. Uh, I think it was, it was a, the Hanalei shaker is what we called it, right? It was a <laughs> That's what it was called, Hanalei. <laughs> yeah. I love that. I love that. Yeah, All right. Another optional step. And um, this is uh, more, again, for aroma. I'm just going to put a dehydrated lemon in there. And last but not least, to kind of accentuate the lavender bitters that were already in there, uh, I'm going to add a sprig of lavender just inside the drink. Very nice. Just like that. Very nice. Well, and did you put the lemon peel in the glass as well? I did put it in the peel, but or I'm, I did put it in the cocktail, but it's uh, choose your own adventure, your personal preference. Okay. Well, gentlemen, Slauncher. Slauncher. cheers to you guys. Cheers. Thank you so much. Cheers. Yes. So nice and light, not too sweet, uh, kind of accentuates the añejo in there. It's, 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 it's not overpowering at all. It's a oh, good sipper. Yeah, very good. Oh, that's refreshing. That's beautiful. Yes. Cheers, y'all. Cheers, Miguel. You'll bring this on set tomorrow, Pierce, for, the, for your uh, fellow actors for nighttime. <laughs> there you that's go. Great. Doing the wedding sequence tomorrow. It's the end of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. It's <laughs> movies with Adam Devine and... Um, Yes, and Julie Haggerty's in it. Ellen, Burs Ellen uh, Barkin plays my, uh, my wife, and we're the outlaws. So, Pierce, I have a couple of questions from um, the audience I, I wanted to ask you. I didn't realize you like, you're a painter. I am. I started, yes, before the acting came into my life, I, I was a commercial artist. I was a trainee commercial artist. <laughs> Uh, but thank God for the acting. But my my act, my practice as a painter really took off in 1987, and I'm self-taught, and uh, I enjoy it very much. I'm hoping to do a, an exhibit, a show uh, next year, and also with Don Ramon, they've kindly asked me to design one of their bottles, a couple of their bottles, three of them. So I'm in the process of uh, looking at the work to see what will be appropriate for the bottle. And uh, that's very exciting, very exciting. I didn't realize that. Very, very, thank you that's for awesome. sharing that with us. Yeah, thank you. I'd love to let us know when your uh, exhibit is, Pierce. I will, Miguel, I will indeed. And you, Seth, should you be? I'll do it in, uh, I'll do it in um, California down in Venice. There's a wonderful artist there, Chuck Ornaldi, who I'm a great admirer of his work. Oh, of course, yes. Kindly invited me and said I could show my work there. And uh, it's, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a good balance to the acting life. And uh, my wife has been a big supporter and she's curated, Keely, my wife has curated all my work. And uh, so, yes. I've, I've dabbled in the NFT world uh, this last oh, wow. 
which has been very exciting. I have no idea how it works. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone does. <laughs> I really don't. It's, it's so bizarre. It's more elusive. But why not? Absolutely. And then another question I have for you, Pierce, is now that you're in a tequila project, if you were 007 again, would you leave the martini for your tequila? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> it would be rude not to. <laughs> but no, that's, a, has a, that's another man's job, and Daniel has gone out there in great blaze of glory and did such a magnificent job. And for me, it's the gift that keeps giving, you know, to, to have had the great honor to play James Bond over four movies. Uh, you know, it really did. It, changed, it changes one's life completely. And, uh, well, now, speaking of James Bond, you know, like I told you, we're in the only Aston Martin residences. It's yeah. actually an official Aston Martin building with the company. And I wanted to know, what is an Aston Martin car for you after being James Bond? I mean, you were Mr. James Bond. Okay. Well, uh, I was, and I had an Aston Martin. They made me one, actually. The first three movies that I did is James Bond. It was BMW. And then the fourth movie, finally, it had the Aston Martin. Oh, wow. And, uh, they, they made one for me. It was beautiful uh, in the past tense because we had a, a house fire and the car caught on fire. It was in the garage. Yeah. And it was a very, uh, luckily, no one was hurt. But we did have this. Uh, small tragedy in our home and it started in the garage and the flames were licking out of the, the garage on that particular night and I just filled it up with gas so it had a full tank and it was a beautiful car it was called the Vanquish okay and uh, <clears throat> yes I watched it burn all that's left of oh, the car, man the two the two and I heard these explosions I mean as we were waiting for the fire trucks to come down my young boy Paris was saying, Dad, do something. There was, there was nothing you could do except wait for the fire trucks. And then I heard these concussions one after the other. Those were the tires blowing up. And in the morning, all that was left was two nameplates that said, hand built for Pierce Brosnan, the Vanquish. And that's all that's left of the car. Oh, man. <laughs> it's a, it's car. a good souvenir, I guess. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, it, it, it was a magnificent car. I love Aston Martins. They, they really are spectacular machines. Aesthetically beautiful too. Well, I will tell you today was a, a, um, a remarkable day because for me, I'm a tequila lover. And to be able to be with one of my favorite actors, but also Miguel, you are a rock star, a star of your own. Um, and it's really an honor for whole living to have you really educate us because I'm a tequila guy and I never, re the best thing is, is I've been drinking the wrong glasses. Now you have a, your own set, you know, that's it. Is there anything you would like to share with us before we sign off, uh, Miguel? Yes, hi mom, my mom's on the call. Uh, hey mom, it's good to see you. Uh, but you know, we were talking about recipes a while ago. Uh, I share all my recipes, uh, not only on my website, but mostly on my Instagram. So it's at Holy City Handcraft. So uh, feel free to ask me any questions regarding anything you have uh, when it comes to cocktails or spirits or anything else. I'd be happy to answer anything even after this call. And thank you so much for having me. It was, it, it's been my honor, my pleasure. Thank you. Good. Well, thank likewise, you, Miguel, thank very you. much. Likewise. likewise. And Pierce? Well, to you, Seth, and the magazine, Hot Living, really, I wish you every good blessing. And uh, the magazine looks magnificent. Thank you for putting me on the cover, hearing my story, and Frederick Orbach, who shot it, and everyone who was involved in it really created such a magnificent piece of art uh, in this magazine. And to you, Miguel, second time around here, I look forward to yes, the sir. next journey that we, we uh we go down the road on. So um, to, one, to one and all out there, stay safe, look after each other, be kind to each other and uh, keep good, good hope and good faith. <laughs> and I wanna thank our friends at Don Ramon because um, for sharing the Platinum Collection with us. Um, and it's been a great uh, webinar and Hope Living is really um, humbled to have both of your time to educate us a little about Pierce's history along with tequila. So thank you so much from Hope Living. Okay, Seth. Absolutely.
All the best. Thanks for enjoy the rest of the day and enjoy the remainder of your movie, Pierce in Atlanta. Thank you again. Stay safe, y'all. Cheers, Cheers. everyone. Bye bye. Mm -hmm. That's it, folks. That's it. We'll see y'all later. (laughs) See you soon. Good to see you, Pierce. Good to see you, Miguel.